Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody feeling today? Okay. All right. Good. Well, I want to thank you all for joining us on this very special day, and it is a very, very special day for uh, West Virginia University and our College of Physical Activity and Sports Sciences. Um, I know we have several very close friends of the college who are here today uh, for the celebration day, and I'm probably going to miss some. You make sure you try to get them if I miss them. But I do want to welcome Casey Wiedebush uh, today, who is here. As many of you know, she is a retired faculty member and a member of our CPAS Hall of Fame. And in case you didn't know, she started the dance program here at the university. It's just done a great job. It's so good to see you. We also have my friend, Dr. Bill Douglas, former Dean of CPAS and an outstanding alumnus of the college. Bill, where are you, sir? Always good to see you and Karen. You know, it's incredible when we think about events like this, so many people contribute to getting us to this day and very much thankful for your leadership, my friend, over, over many years. We have Dr. Herb Amato, a member of the visiting committee of the college who serves as the associate dean of undergraduate studies at another very fine university, James Madison University. Herb, where are you sitting? Herb, welcome back. From Fairmont, it's nice to have you back in West Virginia. Uh, we are here today to celebrate a major gift to the university, which is also a major gift to our State of the Minds campaign and a gift that happens to be the largest gift in the history of CPAS. The late Dr. Patricia Fell donated an amazing $3.4 million to CPAS, where she served as a department chair and an administrator for 16 years. Her gift will help WVU advance our strategic goal of educating students for the 21st century. The gift will benefit CPAS in many ways. It will establish the uh, Dr. Pat Fell Undergraduate Scholarship Program that will provide educational opportunities for our students. And in a few minutes, you will meet the first recipient of that scholarship, Ashante Alar, who is a PhD student here. She is a bright and talented scholar who will tell you what this scholarship means to her. This gift will also support the building fund for our new state-of-the-art CPAS building that will open next fall. And I can promise you, and Dana, I'm sure you will agree with me, this will be a truly spectacular building that will provide our students with an excellent learning environment. It's gonna to be top-notch and really special. I'm really happy for you, Dana. I'm happy for our faculty and staff, and I'm happy for the students that will get to study in that environment. The gift will uh, establish an endowed professorship and an endowment for academic enhancement. It will also support the Dr. Uh, Pat Fall uh, International Program Endowment and a Wellness and Health Fund. It's a really, really big and special gift. In reality, for us, it's a transformational gift that will help launch CPAS and our students into an exciting new era. As Dean Brooks will tell you in a few minutes, Dr. Uh, Fell, um, touched so many lives as a WVU faculty member, and she did it in a really powerful, powerful way. She made a lasting impact on the university by planting the seeds for the basic instruction program for our students and for the uh, lifetime activities program for youth and adults in our community. But you know, as I, I was sitting back uh, reading a lot about this and learning about her and this gift, it's really amazing if you think about it that she um, really dedicated her whole life you know, teaching students, mentoring students, um, and now chose, um, you know, uh, to provide um, the gift of hope and opportunity for new generations of students through her state gift, uh, students that she will never meet. Um, so what an impact she had um, then and will continue to have for students that, that literally she will, will, will never meet. Um, her, uh, this gift will live on in the work of our outstanding faculty and staff, and Dana, you have an incredible group around you uh, in the College of Physical Activity and Sports Sciences. And honestly, I continue to be amazed um, how much people love this university and how much they give um, the friends, donors, and alums of this university. The reality is we couldn't do it without that support. So gifts um, like this uh, that are in Pat's uh, estate uh, make a really big difference uh, to the university and for future generations. So I want to thank you all for being here uh, to celebrate this uh, wonderful and transformational gift 
Um, and I want you to know that this college is lucky to have a really good leader uh, who is now getting ready to start another five-year term uh, as dean. Uh, and Dane, I think you've done a great job. I'm thankful for your friendship and for your leadership. Can you uh, please welcome the dean of the college? I'll also say good morning. And uh, I'll also say what a blessed day and never get to count our blessings because this is truly one of the remarkable days in life of our college and of our university. Uh, before I begin my remarks, I do want to recognize all of our, all CPAS past faculty. Please stand, let's say thank you, past CPAS faculty. Stand up, let's say recognize Bill, stand up, John Spiker, Bill Douglas, Martha Thorne. Please stand up, Karen, thank you so much. Uh, I hope that you know that each and every one of you have touched my life in a very positive manner. I do want to thank you for your support over and over. Thank you. I also want to recognize our current faculty, and you, I do have an outstanding faculty. We have an outstanding faculty. So will the faculty please stand, and let's thank you, faculty, for all your hard work behind the scenes. You know, it, it's, it makes my job, the other dean's job, pretty easy. When you talk to an alum, and they ask you, not by what am I doing, but what's the faculty doing? Or remember, I had Dr. Fell for philosophy class, 7 to 10 o'clock on Wednesday night. After I believe I had, some of you remember that, existential, pragmatism, naturalism, I still recall the words today and Dr. Fell delivering those sermons. And I see Dr. Jones smiling back there because he also had that philosophy class from 7 to 10 o'clock. Okay? But I also need to recognize the staff are unsung heroes, so please stand, staff. Let's recognize you, because you do so much to make this possible, and we don't take time to do that. I also need to recognize my good friend, Steve Dove. Steve, stand up, member of Hall of Fame, the Director of Alumni Association. Thank you, Steve. Dean Bob Jones, Dean Jones, stand up. Thank you for all your support at Everly College. Thank you for being here with us today. I also need to recognize all of our former Hall of Fame inductees who came back to be with us today. So will all the CPAS Hall of Fame inductees please stand and let's recognize you. Again, we cannot do without you. Thank you again for all that you have done, Hall of Fame inductees. So with that, I'll say President Clemens, Provost Wheatley, my boss, my mentor, uh, honored guests, friends, and colleagues, uh, thank you for taking time to be with us this morning. Today is truly a celebration, but I'm also remembered about Janetta Cole, who reminds us the ultimate expression of leadership is service to others. So today we recognize the ultimate leader, the ultimate servant, Dr. Pat Fell. There's a lot of things I can say and things I cannot say about Pat Fell. Some things I will share with you, particularly as my journey and the journey of my former mentor, Bill Douglas. As it was said over again, she did start the Lifetime Activities Program. She was a visionary, a community-based program in which we do not have a YMCA. She had that vision. Uh, Mr. President, Madam Provost, she oversaw the basic instruction program. Some good news, physical education was required, two credits for every student before they graduated. Let's put that back on the plate as general physical education as being part of a liberally educated college student, wellness. We put it back on the plate. But the rest is story. How many of you work, remember Stansbury Hall at Emer Hall, where you work pulling out those cards and adding students to classes? Raise your hand if you remember those experiences. Look around, Mr. Bad Press the President. This is before Star and everything else. We were at Emer and Stansbury Hall. I won't say about those students who actually parlayed those cards to make money, but I suspect that that did happen along the way, being entrepreneurs. But just as important, I would say to you that Pat Fell, Dr. Fell, was a drum major, a drum major for women in leadership positions, a drum major for women's in sports. You have to remember when Dr. Fell came along, this was Title IX and pre-Title IX, where it was truly very unlikely that a woman would be in a leadership position. And Dr. Fell was an advocate and leader in our college. As you might imagine, Dr. Fell received many honors and awards, the Aford Honor Award, the Midwestrich A Honor Award, the Ray Oak Duncan Award, which is the highest award bestowed by our state association. And of course, she was inducted into our Hall of Fame. But on a personal note, and here I'm gonna get involved, turn around again. If Pat Fell, Dr. Fell touched your life in some way, raise your hand, give a shout out. All those past GAs, I want you to look at that, okay? It is quite a remarkable gift and legacy. 
But I'll talk about a young Dana Brooks who came out of Towson State College, who actually Dr. Phil hired me. And she thought I was a female, Dana Brooks, sight unseen. <laughs> Boy, was she surprised when I showed up. <laughs> OK. She just saw Towson State, very good institution, teacher education, particularly during the 1970s. But then she began to sign all of her GAs. I'm going to have you smile here a second. She gave you a card to fill out and say, what are the sports in which you believe you have expertise in? And you fill them out. We ranked it from 1 to X, X being, please do not give me X. More times than not, former GAs and friends, what class did you get? X. <laughs> now, I won't talk about my X's, but I will talk about teaching handball. One wall handball, Stansbury Hall. Raise your hand, yes. I remember teaching gymnastics, badminton. I did not go to swimming. She, that was a double X, so she kept it that one. <laughs> Basketball, and yes, I taught beginning gymnastics, tumbling. And I remember that at Stansbury Hall. I also remember the many journeys, first of all, that Bill Douglas and I had visiting with Dr. Fell during a home in Cincinnati. The lunch, the dinner, the breakfast. But some important things I want you to know about Dr. Fell that's not in the script. Her mother was aged and frail. But Dr. Douglas will tell you she would leave the Coliseum on a Friday. She would drive all the way back to Cincinnati to caretake for her mother and be back first thing on Monday morning. Now, I believe Cincinnati is about a five-hour drive. Dr. Phil May made it four and a half hours. <laughs> Not that she was known to have a heavy foot or anything. But I will always remember, first when Bill and I met with her, then I met with her for the many years, the conversation always went back to, first of all, how her children were doing, her graduate teaching assistants. And she always talked a story about Dr. Wade or Dr. Jones, and the stories went on. She cared somewhat about me, but she cared more about what her GAs, her children were doing. And that's probably Dr. Fell's legacy, one of giving and caring and nurturing. We were her children. We remain her children. And that's something I would never forget. I'll never forget also Peg Roxby, her very good friend in life, who also was a graduate of our college, who had passed away. So what does the gift mean? I guess the President Clemens said to us, the word transformation or transforming does come into mind. Of course, it means to change. Well, I'm going to say what this change is so critical to our college. How is it going to make a difference? My goal, our goal, is to be one of the premier kinesiology CBAS programs in the universe. We do that with quality faculty, quality students, quality programming, and quality alumni support. And Dr. Phil's gift is just one testimony of that support. So with that, I would say thank you for being with us today. Thank you, President. Thank you. My boss, Provost Wheatley, you mean so much to me in your mentorship. I do want to thank some other people before I sit down. First, I need to thank Kim Camion, who's in the back, who's working so hard behind the scenes. Wave, Kim. <laughs> Finally, I look at Bill Douglas now. For many, many years, we did not have a full-time development officer. And Dennis Tony, please stand up. Thank you, thank you, thank you for working with us. I also need to thank the W Foundation staff. You are the best. Second to none, so W staff, Foundation staff, stand up. Let's say thank you. Come on, Chuck, stand up there. Deb Miller, Lynn Dawson. And I often say when I travel in the country, we do have the best. They're concerned, they're professional, and they're on task. Deb Miller, thank you so much. Uh, Deb asked me when I was, when I was, asked me, I was in my office, and Deb calls says, Dana, are you sitting down? Said, do you remember his laugh? I said, no, but I can be sitting down. Dana, the word is, this is the gift. yoo ha OK. But Deb was behind the scene, making it happen, making sure we received the funds. So Deb, thank you for all the work that you have done for many, many years. I also want to thank Jamie Lester. Jamie Lester is from Morgantown, Deb, you graduate. Jamie and his company actually produced the plaque that will be unveiled a little later. So thank you, Jamie, for all you're doing. So with that, I'll now invite to the podium a very good friend and colleague. And her name is Ashante Aller. But we call her Tay. But when she comes up, Let's talk about Tay. Uh, she is currently a PhD program in kinesiology in the teacher education program, better known as PEAT. Uh, she is expected to graduate in December 2014. It will happen. Look at her committee members. They'll say this will happen. Some other things about Tay. She received a master's degree in secondary education and in Spanish for W. And she also received a baccalaureate degree in teacher education, PEAT, and also a degree in Spanish. 
Uh, she was a Big East academic All-American. She was on the athletic scholarship for WU. She was on the Dean's List many times, and she's a member of the Athletic Director's Honor Roll. Tay is currently the Dr. Pat Fell Graduate Student Scholarship. A note, Dr. Fell, before she passed away, in fact, did endow a scholarship at the graduate level, and Tay is the recipient of that scholarship. So please put your hands together and welcome Tay to provide some remarks. The CPAS mission statement is as follows. The College of Physical Activity and Sports Sciences is actively engaged in enhancing West Virginia University's commitment to teaching, research, and service. This academic unit holds the intellectual and personal growth of the individual as its central purpose. The college is dedicated to offering academic and professional programs related to sport and human movement activities. These programs are characterized by curricular experiences which are designed to broaden perspectives, enrich awareness, deepen understanding, establish disciplined habits of thought, prepare for meaningful careers, and thus help individuals become informed, responsive, and productive citizens. Dr. Fell embodied this mission. A role model committed to her students and colleagues, she made a significant impact on West Virginia University. During her tenure, she helped to develop the women's sports program, mentored aspiring professionals, and served as one of a handful of female administrators on campus at that time. In addition to coaching, Dr. Fell established the Lifetime Activities Program and Basic Instruction Program. Both programs continue to strive and are as relevant today as they were at the time of their initial offering. As a student, I was given opportunities to teach peers as part of the Basic Instruction Program from which I gained valuable teaching experience while promoting physical activity among the college student body. As a parent, my son has the opportunity to learn to swim, take martial arts, and many other activities within the Lifetime Activities Program. It is because of Dr. Fell's accomplishments that myself and other students and female athletes are able to achieve our dreams. Although I did not know her personally, I believe in all she exemplifies. The characteristics to which I aspire as an emerging leader in, within our shared field that of compassion, leadership, and generosity. As a recipient of one of Dr. Fell's scholarships, it is with great gratitude and respect that I pay tribute to her for inspiring and paving the way for other female leaders. Her legacy will live on throughout the lifetime activities and basic instruction programs. It will also live on through the work of those she has mentored in the past and that of future recipients of her endowments. Thank you. No, I'm not Wayne King. <laughs> uh, regretfully, Wayne had a conflict that came up this morning and asked if I would step in. My name is Len Dotson. I'm the Senior Vice President for Development at the Foundation. And selfishly, I'm glad I'm here because the college has some special meaning to me that doesn't occur with some others. You see, I have a daughter who's a graduate of the college. and came back and actually taught for a while while being the athletic trainer for the women's basketball team. And I will tell you that she's now your biggest advocate under the shadow of Ohio State because she, is, uh, she works for Children's Hospital and there has been quite a bit of jealousy because the school has been sending a number of graduates over to work in the sports medicine clinics. And I don't mind telling you that Ohio State supplies all the docs for the hospital. And there is quite a bit of jealousy of why are we seeing so many WVU students over here working? So to the faculty, I compliment you. And to Pat Fell, I say thank you. Because her gifts are going to allow that legacy of quality to continue. You know, WVU's CPAS has a national reputation. Now, I'm most familiar in it because of the athletic training program, but it's across the board, folks. I remember when my daughter went down to Auburn, they were jumping up and down, not because it was my daughter. They were getting a WVU graduate to come do their, uh, do a graduate program there. 
And they were so excited because, wow, if we've, we've broken the mold. We got our first one, maybe we can get more. Now gifts, like Pat Fells, are game changers. They make the difference. And what's even more special, and I had the privilege of knowing Pat, was the fact that it's a faculty member. And a faculty member to believe so much in where she worked, in the institution, in the students, that she gave her own money. You know, we talk about giving our time, but if you really look at our society, where we give our money is where we're saying what is most important to us. And for her to turn around and to make such a gift in her will tells all the other alums out there, I believe in this institution, I believe in CPASS, and I want to give back. And there isn't any greater testimonial. And in a campaign, it has special meaning as we encourage others to do so uh, during this particular time. So I make a promise to you that the foundation will be good stewards of her money, will ensure it's spent as she intended it. We will work hard to grow the endowments so that students have those scholarships, so that faculty can benefit from the programs that are funded, and that the dollars are there to help fund the building. That's our responsibility, and we will meet it for the faculty, for the students, not only today, but for future generations. So to Pat, we thank you, and to the school, we thank you for the work you've done. Good morning. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Michelle Wheatley, and I'm the Provost Chief Academic Officer here. And I have to tell you, when Dana Brooks came to my office and gave me a heads up about this particular gift, I have been smiling ever since, because this really shows what can happen when you do the right things. I looked Dana right in the face, and I said to him, you have just gotten what you deserve. Um, you know, we often don't appreciate that the academic community becomes like a family. Um, some people are just passing through, students will be here for a while and move on, and then of course they'll come back for events like Saturday and then they feel part of the family. But there are people who really uh, think of this academic community as their family. And we have no idea what that might mean in terms of the capital campaign. Um, when Dana told me more about his friendship uh, and great deal of respect for Dr. Pat Fell, he really did all the right things over, what, 30 years, Dana? Um, he knew that she had given him opportunity and he had great respect for her. Um, and he always thought, about showing that respect as he made his uh, forward journey to become the dean of the college. He never forgot about her. He used to visit her when she was in her declining years. He had no idea that she had this kind of capacity, but he never forgot that she was part of his family. And we have no idea who resides within this academic community and what kind of family structures they have and what kind of capacity they have. So I think it's a great example for all of us to just have this sense of caring and community because if you make this place like a family, I mean, I think we'll reap the benefits uh, in many years to come. Um, on the way in, I looked at some of the photographs and had conversation with some of you. Of course, I never had the privilege of meeting uh, Dr. Pat Fell, but I did hear that she was a formidable lady. And, you know, being provost and a formidable lady myself, I just, I just wish I could have met her because formidable works for me. 
Um, clearly, it was a time when there weren't many women in the academy. Um, you know, the ones that we had here probably served as great role models to those other women who followed. Of course, you know, times have changed greatly, and now we see, you know, the, the youngsters in our midst who are going to go out and become, um, become great role models for those and formidable in a different way because society and the times have changed around us. Um, but anyway, I just want to tell you, this college has got great leadership. I mean, I do worry about Dana Brooks because, you know, I, he just works too hard. But I'll tell you, he embodies what it is to be a really decent human being pretty much all the time. Never seen him get upset. He always tries to model good behaviors. He's always kind. And this is what happens. So uh, we will move forward with this gift. It's a game changer for CPAS. And when you look at all the exciting things that are happening there with the new building and this transformational gift, I think it's, it's a great time for us and, of course, for the university because we are recognizing. I mean, you made the joke earlier, Dana, about, well, we should be requiring phys ed of, of, of all students. You know, we are looking at physical activity as being the plus side, you know, wellness and preventative health care as being the upside to the downside of all the problems we have, you know, as the nation struggles with its inability to support, you know, the existing uh, health care system. So um, really, you know, Dane has done some remarkable uh, work for me in this past year, working in partnership, particularly with the Health Sciences Center, in how um, we can really move ahead with uh, eliminating health disparities and, of course, getting people to be more aware of, you know, taking better care care of themselves and moving and whatnot is a, is a big part of that. So um, on behalf of all the formidable uh, women out there and all the formidable students that we're going to have uh, coming through with this transformational gift, uh, I want to thank Dana for all he's doing. And we will do all we can to position this college for a new beginning, a new tomorrow. Thank you very much.